Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your having this hearing to each and every one of the witnesses. Um, thank you. I've visited in many of your labs. I've worked with you all, I guess, over the past 14 years, now 15 years. Um, in short, our national labs are a national treasure. Um, it's probably the most enlightening uh, experience I've had as a member of Congress and now as a senior appropriator chairing the Energy and Water Subcommittee, which funds the um, Department of Energy, but uh, could not be more pleased and thankful for your opening statements and the questions. Um, I wanted to uh, ask each and every one of you uh, your thoughts about this. Uh, my district is home to the Oak Ridge National Lab, actually Oak Ridge Reservation. We have the NNSA facility there, Y-12 building, UPF. Uh, nuclear cleanup is near and dear to my heart at many of your reservations. I know Idaho has done a great job over the years, Los Alamos. Um, I chair seven or eight nuclear-related caucuses. So this is what I do in, in Congress, and each and every one of you all have been my partners. Um, this committee has long recognized the value of public-private partnerships. In fact, I think some of you alluded to this in your comments, uh, that boost our nation's competitiveness on a global scale. So I'm gonna ask each and every one of you all, can you explain the benefits and share any examples of industry collaboration leading to the commercialization of transformative technological achievements? For example, in my district, X Energy, which the chair has already referenced, developed their triso fuel at ORNL and is now building a commercial facility to produce it at scale. Uh, Dr. Wagner, two companies working at INL are currently conducting a feasibility study to co-locate their fuel fabrication facilities and are exploring collaboration on reprocessing and recycling technologies, which is also near and dear to my heart. Can you all comment on the benefit of industry collaboration and the pathways to commercialization? And I guess I'll just start with Dr. Wagner and go through. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And, and I'd like to start by thanking you for your support of the National Laboratories in general and for nuclear energy in particular. You've been a, a great advocate for, for the, both of those areas and much, much more. Um, so you already are quite familiar with a lot of the public-private partnerships and the, and the important aspects of going, but I'd like to maybe just quickly uh, talk about a couple. Uh, you mentioned Triso Fuel. It was the laboratories that came together uh, with the Department of Energy more than a decade ago to, to figure out how to fabricate and then evaluate the performance of the fabricated triso fuel and, and graphite associated with those reactor types, working together with private industry and ultimately issuing a topical safety analysis report uh, through the Electric Power Research Institute to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that formed a baseline then for all of these reactor developers to work from. So really kick-starting that fuel form in terms of the availability for private, uh, private developers to use that. Today, one of the things that we're really doing closely with multiple private companies is providing test beds for full system reactor demonstrations that will de-risk, as I said, their technologies and enable uh, their path to commercial deployment. These things are not possible um, in facilities other than facilities like the Department of Energy National Laboratories. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mason. Um, so I, I guess maybe I'll highlight the importance of public-private partnerships in artificial intelligence. Uh, the U.S. is fortunate that we have private sector actors who are making massive investments in developing these capabilities. In fact, that's one of our big strategic advantages. When you look at what's going on in China, there are investments on a similar scale. And of course, in the Chinese system, there is no clear distinction between government investments and private investments and national security investments. That's why it's essential that we are able to leverage the tremendous innovation that's happening in our private sector uh, for our national security needs. Um, we have been working with uh, many of the AI companies, uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, We're, we've been using LAMA, the, the meta open source AI, but I wanted to highlight two partnerships in particular. Uh, one is with NVIDIA, the chip maker, Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we took delivery of a, a wonderful new machine called Venado that we um, 
agreed to purchase four years ago. It's a good thing we made the deal with NVIDIA four years ago because I don't think we could get it now. Um, and recently, we reached an agreement with OpenAI to field their raw model weights on that machine in a classified environment in service of all three of the NNSA labs, Livermore, Sandia, and Los Alamos. And this is an example where we can take advantage of the huge investment that OpenAI developed or uh, expended in developing their advanced models, but do it in a classified environment for our national security uh, applications. You know, there may not be as big a financial model to incentivize the private sector to do that sort of work, and that's why we need to work to align our interests and hopefully drive forward the science and technology as well. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think I've exceeded my time, and, and I'll do respect to our witnesses, uh, who I know very well and respect, but I certainly want to yield back. I know our colleagues all want to speak.